Bureau of Mobility, there's task force, all the community groups in terms of most of it. I mistook my gun for my team. Correct? And so a perceived threat has to be more definitive to me. In other words, if I come in a police officer with a baseball bat or a knife or a gun, that's a real threat. But a perceived threat is something that you can toss up in your mind that can result in, a, in bad judgment. So I'm saying that, and I say that on the basis of uh, a case I was involved with 30 years ago, Mr. John Woods, 16 year old kid who was lured into robbing a 7 Eleven store. And he had, he had a a stick in the bag, but the police were waiting for him. And when he when he appeared, I mean he was just shot to pieces. And they had a had a, a picture of his body in the report where he had been just shot up. So I think it's very important that uh, there be, there is a re examination and a reevaluation of the use of the use of deadly and review that, come up with some definitive definitions about how that should be implemented. Thank you. So, if I can address that. Just a moment. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. I didn't plan on coming up yet, but, um, so I'm going on my 34th year. Please. Yes. Um, I can tell you in the three decades that I've been doing this, it's changed on our ability to use that got more and more restrictive. There was a landmark case in the Supreme Court uh, called Graham v. Connor, and that dictates for all law enforcement across this country what, when, and under what circumstances we can use deadly force. And the, the term is what is objectively, objectively reasonable. Now, here in Summit County, the officer is able to make a decision in the moment, and almost 100% of the time, that decision, because everything's so quick and moving, to that officer in that moment, it may appear objectively reasonable. But here in Summit County, every single officer involved shooting is presented to the Attorney General's office, who will present it to the grand jury. And the grand jury, members of the community, will make, up a, make a decision whether or not the officer's interpretation of what was happening was objectively reasonable given the circumstances. If they say yes, then the officer is clear. If they say no, then the officer goes to trial. And then it's a different system, the criminal trial, and, case, and then evidence is presented, and then the jury will make a decision whether or not it was objectively reasonable or not. That's a, change, that's a dramatic change. I came in on the tail end of generational. We had an officer in Corpus Christi, God bless his soul, Bill, Bill Thomas, great guy, great guy. But he came up in a time period where you could shoot fleeing felons. So if somebody breaks into a store and steals beer and they're running, and this is back in the 60s and 70s, you could actually, as an officer, shoot them because they're fleeing felons. That law was changed because how absurd it was, right? But it's the people who set the laws through their elected representatives. Not so much the councilmen. On the local level, yes, but it's your state representatives, it's your state senators that will craft on what we can and can't do. The state of Washington, where I'm coming from, restricted things down, almost locked them down to where it became very difficult for police officers to be able to police. Because policing is much more than law enforcement, right? It's a whole host of different things. That's neither here nor there. So we have, and we will continue to and evaluate. But we derive our power from you all through your elected representatives and through your vote. So if there's things that you think that we need to be doing even more so, I'm always willing to listen. But we follow the guideposts of federal law, uh, case decisions, case guideposts of federal law, uh, case decisions, case law coming out of the federal courts and the state courts. And Grant v. Connor is the landmark case that we look to uh, 
when it comes to our ability to use force and especially deadly force. Okay, I appreciate your uh, comments, and I'll just close out by saying, uh, or asking, you know, how does that criteria fit with regard to what happened to Jalen? No, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not rolling my eyes because I'm, 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 I'm doing that because I want to be able to, to respond, okay. but I may not be able to because there's BCI okay. is doing the I'll just close out by saying the perception of the community, the thought of the community, is that it was like old people. All right. And so I'll just end, end on that. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. This is, excuse me, if we can, this is what I'm going to do because I know those. These kind of questions are going to be heavy for the chief and the lieutenants. Um, and I appreciate you coming down to be able to address some of them. Okay. But the meat of this meeting is something that we can work collectively with you. Okay. And so what I'd like to do first is, is with Officer Brown. Yeah, yes, sir. Officer Brown is done. I'd like to bring up um, the principal of Brooklyn High School. Can I, I just want to know what his name is. I oh, didn't get oh, the name. I didn't oh, get the name. Oh, she's my last. She's my last. He's on your agenda. He's on, he's on your job. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's fine. So, so this is what I want to do. I want to bring up um, uh, this teacher so she can share how we can, uh, uh, what's going on in the school and how we can support it. Because understand, the question was asked amongst council. Um, when council was trying to get into some business, we got enough of our own. Does the school reflect the community? Does the community reflect the school? Does the school reflect the community? Or does the community reflect the school? It's almost like the chicken and egg. I would beg to say this. Since we're the adults, the school is going to reflect whatever culture and behavior we allow to exist in our community. So you know all the madness that's happening in our freedom community right now. If you don't know, few between the, 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 the west side and the east side and the north side of these children is, is real. What kind of support are we going to be able to provide for those that are trying to provide and create a safe, nurturing environment inside the school? This is an opportunity for those who want to. Sure, to I'm also going to grass, um, and so it's just as a part of what I do, um, it is a great honor.
social emotional learning. How are we teaching people to be better? We know that that is going to be an issue after this summer. It's, it's an issue every time our kids come out of school. They go through a lot. In the community at home, and so since we're aware of that, I have a plan. Somebody hired me. I have a plan. <laughs> our students together, giving them something that's called ACE, that's Adverse Childhood Experience Referral, and then pairing them with being closely involved with each other. Okay. I'm also, I'm also a member of Health and Lord 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 Finally, because we are in school, it is uh, the math category for the student math education. So my goal is to have every student involved in the curriculum. Uh, it's something that we will care to do for a long time. Right? To make sure that people are at school and that you are all in the same place. That you feel like what our motto is as a community is a village. A village. Okay. Now I promise I got one more page and wrap it up. Follow us on social media. We have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. Our Facebook page is Social Community Learning Center. Okay. 
getting them ready for those five to ten minutes. And then I'm also going to be working with Judge David Hamilton with the counseling program so that if you have limited um, accepted choices, we want to make sure um, that we give our students that avenue. But then we also want to make sure that you, because we know that the more average child is experiencing. Each of the schools has their own pathways. We have dozens, but I know East has an auto loaded. Um, LA has that area. So it just depends on what school is in your area. I mean, I, I wasn't asking about the auto loaded. I was just talking about the city of Africa and the purpose. I'm sure they are, but they're not one of our top only tax gaps. Any other questions? Yes. This is not a question, but it's a comment. Both of my grandsons went through free college programs in both of them. Got their associate degrees, and then went on to have you got the bachelor's degree. So I think we're going to do the one good job. Mine is just as bad. I'm sorry. Oh, no, y'all want to come in too? Yeah, my godson goes to Bookville, and he got a four point to and Kent State Upward Bound and walks to the library. So, yeah, it's good that y'all going to have programs like the eSports. So that's why a lot of kids try to get sent out of district just to go to those schools that are offering those new technical things because that's the new – like construction technology is one of the pathways I want to talk to you about later on. What about neighborhood volunteers? So, Brother Neil and I have been working um, to get neighborhood volunteers to come from our neighborhood staff into the building. So, in the neighborhood staff, so we should answer that. But, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Last year, um, COVID kind of slowed us down with getting everything implemented. We would have to obviously have a background check and that kind of thing to be around the kids, but we welcome the community in the building. Um, again, to change those perceptions, change those mindsets. I will say this about our students. Um, a lot of us are in their own schools, right? I, I'm from uh, when I was younger now. Right? So I'm saying I'm giving a disclaimer because I want you in the building, but I want you to understand the culture of the building as well. It is about building relationships with the students. Once you build that relationship, they will move a mountain for you. But if you come in and say, I'm the teacher for such and such, and I need you to go, you're not going to have a great time at, uh, at any school, but especially. This teacher was talking about all the outstanding programs. She missed, she sits right next to a wrestling coach. So I don't, I don't, no one on this. How could you forget? Most people know that the University of Akron has been national champ in the East. Well, she forgot to mention, she forgot to mention that Bookville's first year in esports, they finished third in the state. Third in the state. And if you guys think all they just play a game, uh, I was watching the program and they were asking Purdue if they thought they would uh, repeat as national champs. Because uh, that year, after you didn't. And I think you guys the same time. They said we could, but one of our players just went pro. These 
folks are making big money. Esports is already great higher than NHL hockey. Folks like Shaquille O'Neal, um, Mr. Owner of the Cavs, Dan, Gary Gilbert, uh, uh, Magic, all these people are, are investing in it. Esports is the way it's going. Uh, so, just want to mention, they're not just playing games. That's, that's, that's real. They learn about STEM, they learn about math, they learn about the science behind it. So, if you have a child that's at home playing games, they sort of get on the esports. Okay. Now, uh, got half an hour left. What I want to do is uh, invite uh, the chief, the lieutenant up, just to share uh, whatever they want to share from an update. And then I want to use the rest of our time to tie it into what the speech you said. Many times you go to community meetings and we're talking about problems, 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 problems. Remember, I said there are no problems, there's only opportunity. There is an opportunity for all of us to get engaged either through support. Or, and what you'll learn about today, getting engaged out in the community and helping to build relationships between the community and our officers. So I'll turn it over to them and then we'll make this discussion. Thank you, Councilman. I learned a long time ago, um, surround yourself with talented, intelligent, passionate people. And I know you all have Officer Brown, but wherever I go, I'm bringing Big Mike because he is the complete package when it comes to all of that. So. Um, Mike has a whole lot of historical information on this police department that I don't because I've only been here next week. It'll be one year. It'll be the one year anniversary. But before I start, I think you hit the nail on the head. As I'm going out to these homicide scenes all too often, or the number of shots fired, not necessarily where somebody was struck, a house was hit or whatever, as I analyzed all this, I would lay it all at conflict resolution. Because the things that we learned growing up, you know, in our community and everything else, kids aren't learning that anymore. They're going from anger, proliferation of firearms, and straight to it. And then before you know it, you got one person dead, another person going to prison for the rest of their life. Like we witnessed last week um, at, at a local uh, bar. Um, but going back on growing up and everything else, with all due respect, I didn't, I didn't sweat. The neighborhood dads, but the neighborhood moms, because they have permission to smack me if, if I stepped out of line, they sure as hell did. Excuse my language, they did. Um, but I, I, I applaud the idea and the, and the partnership of neighborhood dads and the schools and whatever role we can play, I'm in. Um, because it is that 360 round hug around our children. We can't lose any more. We can't. It's a crisis, and, it's, and we need to act now. Um, okay, we really didn't have an agenda, so I'm going to go straight to June 27th. We had a horrific incident in this city, an incident where there were no winners, an incident where nobody that I know of wanted the outcomes that we had, either in that moment or what followed. I'm limited in what I can say about the investigation because we have been walled off from it. For the first time in the history of the police department that I'm aware of, we went outside the organization to have to accomplish what I understand to be a, a desire from this community for several years, which is when we have an officer involved shooting, that we are not investigating it, we're bringing somebody in from the outside for transparency, for credibility. And I, have, I have total confidence in my detectives. I think Lieutenant Whitten and others are some of the best in the state, if not in the country. But I understand the perception. So we have been walled off. I have not talked to the investigator. I have not talked to anybody from DCI about the investigation. Um, but what I'd like to talk about, and I'm going to ask you all a question, because it's a fear of mine of what's happened. Prior to June 27th, for the eight months, nine months that I've been here, I've been out in the community. I've been interacting with my officers, and I'm trying to assess the relationship between here and here, the officers and the community. And I didn't grow up in Akron. I don't have ties to Akron. I, you know, my great, great, great uncle lived here once upon a time. Um, 
But was what I was assessing and what I was hearing from community members, many like you who live in these wards and everything, that the relationship was was okay. It wasn't terrible like I've seen in other parts of the country. It wasn't great, but it was a great place for me to start launching our efforts to build deeper relationships in all communities in Africa. And June 27th, is, and that changed things. And so my question to you all, did we lose some ground? I think I know the answer. Did we lose ground on June 27th? Okay, here's my second question. How do we get it back? Transparency, sir. I think put the ground for the
dramatic, dramatic effort. A major hiring campaign. We had a little bit more than 700 people show up. Now, the good thing is, and you want to talk about our recruitment campaigns and our efforts to increase diversity in our police department. Yeah, I, I swing back to the old point you were going to make. I mean, I got killed here in Arlington. Yep. Uh, you know, all of over it's extraordinary in terms of, you know, it's kind of more common for mayor's office to be submitting all those, right? So it's a great idea. But like you said, from the time that uh, Chuck and Jones and Sherman and then even myself, I had like about 3,000 people applying to those types of things. And it's harder and harder now. Into the life span of the longer it had a dramatic impact, we believe, on the individual outcome and the result of those efforts. Obviously, we want uh, people with desire to serve the community to achieve some initiative was not so much the uh, prototypical police law enforcement officer versus a community center candidate, right? So that's kind of what we sought to see and um, uh, sought to increase diversity as we pointed out. Stakeholder community officers are retiring, so we're doing this under their family members. So that was kind of that was one of the uh, core of our campaign. To be honest with you, although we were just a big part of that. And, uh, uh, on average, for example, I can tell you this is my first time being overseeing uh, what meant to be a background project, right? And just about known for years back that we've had approximately anywhere from eight and a half to eleven percent minority applicants as a whole, including all of the friendly. Age of like that percent, right? Especially the last few cycles. And this particular time, again, we didn't see it translate from application to test, but we had 35% of the applicants this time were black African American applicants. That's 35 alone for that demographic. And it was about 37% total for all other demographics. So we are intentionally trying to take steps in that right direction, right? A lot of those 35% live here in this community, right? When we look at you know, you just got the name and that kind of thing from the baseline you can think about it. But we were seeing things that the vast majority were from Africa. So that was, I think, perhaps the devil should be. I'm kind of adding that. I got a question in the back. That's Coach Robert Hubbard, Mr. Russell, because I'm going to you guys in a minute. Go ahead, Bob. Sorry, I'm going to read in the room. Okay, so you'll be that, Mr. Purdue, and then Ms. Shepard, and then Mr. Purdue. Okay. So you. And the officer had had a very small window to stop the threat, and that's what he did. The other one was, what was the street, was it Richie? Richie Street, where a person had somebody in the house that he had threatened to kill, kept on coming back in view, and the third time he came in view, he went like this to the officers. The officers shot him, and I think they shot three or four times, I can't remember. Then he, he had some fatal wounds, but he had enough time to go back in the living room and kill the guy that he was holding hostage, basically. Um, I could tell you that in this last one, and again, I got to be careful because there's an independent investigation. You know what? I can't even talk about it because the videos will come out by Thursday. So that, that one will come out on Thursday, but I will also tell you this folks, our officers routinely, I'm talking routinely are placed in situations and Al, you correct me if I'm wrong on this where they are justified in using deadly force and they don't do it. They don't do it. We had a shootout two nights ago, three nights ago, where two people are shooting at each other, two ladies go down, officers roll up in the middle of it. Shots are being fired, they're pointing and shooting. Their first priority, because the guy disappeared, was to provide aid to, they just want to come and to my knowledge, I don't think there was any shootings and traffic stops over the last two years. Everyone, not for the same reasons, but they, they're in pictures and everything else. That we can reduce the number of shootings, I'm all in. Absolutely. Because a friend of mine corrected me about the 1040 yesterday, right? So, but what we got out of that conversation, uh, he and I, um, was we, 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 we ended up 
in the humanity of the two schools and what the spirit of the people that attend those historic schools, uh, what they embody, right? And it kind of goes back to the question in the back of the room about, uh, you know, could officers do this, could officers do that? And, and the chief mentioning that uh, officers, this is the last thing that an officer wants to face. And, and we're not here to even really specifically uh, adjudicate those actions and all of that. Like you said, this is the absolute first time in my 23 years, Al's been here 30, uh, Sherman's retired, that the outside agency has um, reviewed our own incident. I think that's a leap forward, not just a step forward, but a leap forward in transparency. So that'll be what it is. But one of my best friends in life was involved in a police shooting here. And it was 10 years ago. And every police shooting we have, he's impacted like he went back through this thing again, which is taking me back to the humanity moment. Like, you know, we embrace the community as tight and as broadly as we can. And, and our only hope at the end, if we do our reasonable thing, uh, people will see, see that there's a human element to us too. Because my buddy, my friend, my brother, is impacted by his situation still like it happened yesterday, like it happened on June 27th. And his circumstance was, you know, like the young lady said in the back of the room. I mean, every situation is different, but he had no choice. You know what I mean? And I just want, you know, we're not the, we're not the we're, you know, the, the court of public opinion has a right to have all of that and arrive at all those determinations, but behind the uniform, behind the badge, and, and that type of thing are men and women that, 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 that do care to the point you could argue there was a you know a fraction uh, difference when we left the community or officers began to move out. But there's still a big chunk of us that live here, and for those who live outside the city, I know that we care. And then I just hope that as we begin to restore the fracture that we created or that the circumstance created by June 27th, to your point, it probably had began to widen even before that, right? My hope is just that we're committed to do our thing, to we're gonna do our part and then some. To, to, to just improve. And I don't know if that directly answers the question or not, but I can tell you that officers don't want to find themselves in that situation. So, you know, whether it be a lot of just, part or not. Again, something to tell you about your police department. One of the first things I looked at when I got here was our use of force. How often are we using force as we're interacting with the public? When you, when you consider all of our contacts in 2021, it's 150,000 ish, somewhere around there. The number of times we use force in those interactions is less than 1%, like 0.0314% of the time. That says something about the organization and the agency. At least it, it told me something about it. Um, okay, great. Thank you so much for those recommendations. I do, I appreciate it. I want to make sure we get into the other questions. And my, my hope is, because we're not going to have time to get in, because this isn't to get into this, but. If, if anybody, any of you have been a part of a working session where, where Project Kojima is a part, it's about coming out with solutions. I'd like to have a time when we bring people back to build on this relationship piece with the school and with the officers, uh, because we're not going to have time to really get into it today. Mr. Purdue, and then this young lady here, and, and then you, Mick. Well, my question to the officers is, has anyone decided or thought about it to be fair and right to the governor and let's disarm the street before you can stop all the shooting and killing and the being afraid to walk the streets for some reason i did something i wrote the united states uh, attorney general we have a common law called the constitution yes sir and we have protection so do I need a gun to go down the street, or do I need a gun to protect my home? So the question is, have any of y'all wrote to governor about that? Yes. Right to carry? Yes. I would like to see a copy of the letter. Sure. It was actually a collection of police chiefs in the state of Ohio that we signed on begging him not to do it. Right. He did it anyway. He did it? it anyway. So what we're asking now, what I'm asking the United States Attorney General, and by if y'all don't, I'm going to call on every veteran. I'm a Vietnam vet, got a big knife when I got hurt in Vietnam. Thank you. Brother, yeah. I am asking every veteran of the United States of America, come under that UN. I don't care if you're Democrat or Republican, you're a human being, and you honor the umbrella of the United States of America. When I wrote my little note to him, 
it is time for us to come together. I don't bear a color. And I don't know how many other people may feel like I do. But when I was hurt over there, I got up off the ground and found out that my blood was red too. And the boy that was laying next to me dead was red too. So when I got up and came home, I had an attitude problem. The rest of said, we're going to get together now because you see how they treat the vets. And we're going to try to get a Labor Day march, a rally, to say that we have come uniform and united for the United States of America now. And we're going to try to protect you. We're going to ask for that joy that we want a unification in this country. We have to go back to saying it's not Republican or Democrat, it's the United States of America. If you don't like being here, that same boat. Take a ride. Thanks, Mr. Perdue. Thank you. Uh, 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 this young lady here, and then Mr. Smith, we got a lot of questions. Um, okay, we, we're going to take three more questions. Four more. You, Mr. Smith, you, and then. And then <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I'm sorry, but I meant, I meant her first. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Then, now, 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 I want you to hear what I'm saying, because I know I'm going to go back and tell my wife. Call the police. No. <laughs> I, 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 know, I know what I said. I know what I meant. Let me put it like that. But no, seriously. One, two, three, and four. I'm sorry, dear. I got you. You're in the four. You're in the four. You're in, you're in the number. You're in the number. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here, here we go. Here we go. Yes, ma'am. All right. My name is Michael. I got a question. My thing about the the recruiting and uh, how you get because I've heard guys, black gentlemen from the neighborhood that came and said they filled out the application and went through the process. But I guess like certain scenarios or seeing by as high as the like the the training, like you know, what I'm saying is it based on you know, what I'm saying the test. Yeah, the testing, like, is it based on, like, their neighbor type of neighborhoods? Or is it based on, like, a suburban type of neighborhood stuff that they're not familiar with? And the second part is, like, in the high schools. Like, when I went, I lived in D.C. growing up, so I moved here for 15. But we used to go on, we had little training in our schools where they had ride-alongs and things like that. When you, the kids actually got to real see the whole spectrum of what they're actually doing and not just, oh, the police are coming when it's a problem instead of, you know, those situations we're like, it should be like the same thing with EMS and the trades and things like that in the schools. If you want the kids from the communities to be able to understand the policing, it's not your old generation. Like, obviously, the first time when you came, and you was like, you were in it because your dad was a police officer and your granddad, and it was a history, and it's, that's like construction. This is like I call it construction um, industries, like the FBI, because you used to have to be a, father, a friend, a brother, or an in-law to get in or secret, something like that. Handshake. Yeah, you yeah. had to have some type of connection, but... It's not, I mean, I don't know. I'm not in school. I ain't been in school in a long time. But they got ROTC for kids going into the so, service. But what about going into the police academies and things like that? We have that? a police explorer program. Um, it's not as well um, advertised. advertised. And we don't have a whole lot of membership. We have some. They do a good job and everything else. There's room to expand. In terms of the test, Mike, I, I asked Lieutenant Miller to take over. Um, and to lead uh, this effort, do you, are you familiar with? I am. Go ahead. So the test, first of all, is a uh, it's a city, it's an HR product. They partner and contract with a testing agency, and police departments across the state use the same type of national testing system. Now they tell us, or assure us, or try to you know convince us that they remove impediments and there are no um, scenario-based biases that would adversely impact you versus me or him. But we know that's the boss in real right. life, I mean. And, and so that's there. But I can tell you what we did in addition to that to improve some of that process was uh, we partnered with the Urban League this year. Now, prior to this year, like somebody like um, Rodney or Al, many years ago, the Urban League would have study test prep programs, right? And to my knowledge, prior to this year, we did it for since late 90s. And this right? is the generation so that needs to, So we did that yeah. this year to help specifically that. So historically, some of the problems that most of uh, most people have with the test, if they fail it, is the video scenario-based testing. So our training this year at the Urban League focused on that. So we went over multiple, multiple video-based scenarios, situational-based video scenarios to try to help that. And we'll continue to do that 
And our hope is that we'll see those increases from people and their outcomes on their exam that way. But I will tell you this, the reason I'm looking is I knew I had an email from Human Resources. That's not a good department. So, Human so Resources is not your friend. We had. <laughs> you should know that. <laughs> they are friend. not your you friend. <laughs> so, um, so we had 700 sign up for the test. We had 300 and 40, 346 take it. Take the test. So. 346 took the test so that's it was the test was given after June 27th so did that impact things I probably mm -hmm. believe it did so even with that drop the percentage of those who identified as black I think was still like 32 percent which is much higher but those that took the test um, 47 passed, 47 percent passed, 53 percent failed. So that's a question that now I need to ask HR. Why? The HR ain't like 80s HR and 70s HR. It's, it's like politicians. It's a political game. They work for the government. So that's a question that needs to be asked and answered. Why did we have so many people who identified in this demographic fail? Fail. The because it's large, bias. <laughs> the larger one was the API, Asian Pacific Islander. It was like a 77 percent failure rate. Now, I also know Damba, Damba Suba, I don't know if you know Officer Suba, he was recruiting, and the numbers that took the test was very, wasn't very high, um, but he rec uh, recruited heavily from the Nepali community, so, and people who have emigrated over here, so there may be language barriers and everything else. Well, there's no language barrier between, you know, in, in the black community. Mm, no, it's not. So, we need to, that's a question I am going to ask. So, we're going to try to do that. The physical part of the testing yes. before you see it here on the floor. That's great. Thanks, Sam. Several other steps the physical, psychological, medical evaluation. This, this will do. Brother Swift, do you mind if the young lady in, in the black and white goes, goes first? No, that's fine. And then, then you, and, and then we'll finish it. Okay. It seems like their answer is on the question that I had. First of all, I'd like to thank you, I'd like to thank the police. We do respect you. We respect the job that you do. We understand in any occupation that there are some bad apples. I'm just going to say that. Exactly. So police have bad apples too. Sure. But we thank you for the job that you yes, do. Now, when I see you out on the streets, I thank you. Thank you. Because I understand we, we wouldn't be as safe as we are with finding carloads of children with guns in their car. We wouldn't be safe. No. We wouldn't be safe. So I'm not just on the police issue because we've got issues in our own community mm -hmm. and we need to start addressing it. Mm -hmm. We need to start addressing it. I'm going to say it again. We need to start addressing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate what you said about the training because that was one thing that I wrote down. I remember at least 30, 40 years ago at Farms, NAACP, they used to do training, Urban League. They did training for the inner city men, men and women who were looking to be recruited as policemen. So the men and women who were looking to be recruited as policemen. So there are mechanisms that can be put in place. I know we've got some money floating around somewhere to probably put into that effort if we're really interested in diversity, diversifying. That should, should probably put into that effort if we're really interested in diversity, diversifying. That shows that we are, that the police need to be licensed. The police need to be what? Licensed. Licensed? Yeah, just like you got nurses licensed. We, we do. Doing the call. Uh, police Explorers program. We don't, those are every, First of all, it's be on that one on one on that one on one on that step seven. First of all, it's be that pathway is in, is at Ellis High School. So that's why you don't see a lot of our students um, knowing about the police job. Because first of all, you can't come back to really solution based things that we can turn into community based legislation. You know, that can be given to it's, it's harder for the senator, but it's a lot easier for me 
if folks know that you've met with the police chief, you've met with the officers, and you've met with the principal from the school, and this comes, comes forward. Because this is my only problem with what the city's doing right now with the youth violence piece. There's no infrastructure to know where, where you're hitting what ward. We need the, these, just like we're talking about officers, and this goes back to the Explorer program, where, where they may not be able to do like the firemen and the EMS, but what if through this ambassador program, they're working as community ambassadors? And uh, I'll, I'll say that at the end. I want you guys to get your questions. Let me say this now, because we're not gonna have time, we're already over. Uh, this is what I want you to do. You see the literature that, that's here, but look at, call, go to Cuyahoga Falls Neighborhood Ambassador. On your web, when you get home on your computer, look up Cuyahoga Falls Neighborhood Ambassador Program. Because that's what I have wanted to really be able to talk about here, about how we create the liaisons between the school system, not just the police department, but if you guys remember when the mayor was here with the service department, with the service department, um, how we create a holistic wraparound support for everybody. But now, thank you for being here. The trauma that children are experiencing over and over and over again, it expresses itself in many different ways. And that's where I think collectively as a community. And so I don't have any ties to any of the high schools, so you're gonna be my favorite high school. <laughs> Actually, I do at Kemp. That's right, so between you and Kemp Boyd. Uh, no, no, you, you got a right too. <laughs> um, I, I tell you what, I wanna thank you. Make improvements so that these preventable, make improvements so that these preventable tragedies don't happen. You know, it's, it's trying to help us Get, come together. Good for you. Ms. Beecher? All right, so I just wanted to real quickly go over that open enrollment uh, question. That Good for you. Ms. Beecher? All right, so I just wanted to real quickly go over that open enrollment uh, question that came up. <laughs> Typically, if you are in the West Akron community, you go to the school that is in your community and you choose from one of those pathways. But if there is an instance that you want to go to, uh, learn about veterinary that is over at Ellis. You could open enroll to go to that school. Um, I think more important though is in the spirit of equity, if we're going to offer that program at Ellis, then we need to in offer it at Post as well. It mm -hmm. has to be intentional. Mm -hmm. We can't always be behind the eight ball. We have to understand if, if our true goal is diversity and we yep. look at the demographics of both schools. And if we have one there, then we need to put one in the West African community, community as well. Um, Can I, Al, who, is that us or is that? No, that is, no. that's, that's no. the that's school board. Yeah, that's, so that's, the that's school not board. us. So we're talking about Yeah, it, mm -hmm. that, that needs to be addressed at the school. Yeah. Um, I agree with you, by the way. And then in addition to that, I will say my experience with the resource officers that we've had in our building has been a good relationship come in, um, they learn the students, they get to know the students, they build the relationships with the students. Um, Officer Hay was actually just hired by Akron Public School, so you guys lost him, but um, he was just hired to teach a criminal justice uh, class over at Ellis, and then I requested to have Asley Williams, so you guys recruited to increase the diversity, to come over to Bookville, um, so that she is in that community, in that school, the students see someone who looks like her, um, who looks like them, um, and she was great when she was there for that period of time. And then my final uh, closing out statement is we did meet earlier in the we year did. when the mayor uh, the came school. out to book the, we want to make sure that we're not just doing that once a year. Amen. Um, that's the way to build those relationships with our kids, for when they see you guys, they're not uncomfortable, like you said your kids were. Um, and so when the officers see our kids, they're also not if there's ever an opportunity, event, it doesn't matter when or where, I will be there. Um, or football game. Football games, yeah. Before that is the carnival, the 24th. And I know 24. that you guys' um, flyers are wrong. It's when. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
the people who are paying, whose tax dollars are making this possible, not have a budget to work with their constituents on. So hearing from you will help a lot. Of you guys have, have heard me share this before. And I really get jealous because like my colleagues in Youngstown, city of only 60,000, each one of their wards got $2 million that they work with the mayor and they work with their residents to do things specifically targeted towards that ward. Um, and they work with their residents to do things specifically targeted towards that ward. Um, uh, and I sent it to, uh, did it make the West Side Baby this time? Okay, that's good. Cause sometimes I catch it, sometimes I don't. And I sent it to the reporter, the, the, I mean to the beacon. The reporter, Abby Marshall, was out on medical leave. So she couldn't put it in. And when she told me, I sent it to Doug Livingston, and that's why I made it in there today. That's why it 